we want to see more investment in this area. This is what you should be demanding. Skills that, that are more, that, that treat service with a discipline. That treat service with the respect that it deserves. Treat it as a science. Treat it as an engineering discipline. Treat it as a management discipline. I mean, that, that's where we are. We're on the throes of moving that way. I say to people often, when I graduated from RPI, I couldn't graduate with a computer science degree because they didn't have one. I mean, other schools had them before I, 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 RPI, but RPI didn't have one. Uh, so I, I'm, a, I'm a double E out of RPI with as many computer courses as I could take because I'm sure the, the fine professors at RPI were sitting there talking to themselves and saying, yeah, really, you think a computer's important? I mean, we want to teach people computers? You think they can make a living with a computer? I mean, what, what kind of garbage is this? You know, isn't that friggin' thing just a tool? We didn't have a slide rule degree. Why do we need a computer degree? <laughs> Can't you just hear them? All those who are not in the academic institution are shaking their heads. I can see that. That's what goes on with these long and short cycles. That's what goes on as things move and evolve. I hate to say it this way, but you know, the institutions of higher education, sometimes they're the last ones to move. It's because they're so comfortable where they are. They don't know what to do if you say to them, hey, we don't do that anymore. Go over here. Say, what are you, nuts? You know, I'm three years from retirement. Don't tell me that. I'm tenured here, man. I mean, I know what I'm doing. Don't tell me that that doesn't work that way anymore. I don't need that. There's a corpus of information now on this. By the way, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of universities around the world are, 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 are having uh, renaissances themselves, to be honest with you. You know, re reaffirming their curricula, uh, retuning their curricula, and doing a much better job of, of bringing all these strange intersections together to, to drive value. I like to summarize it this way. What we want, what we want are fewer people who are educated like me in the shape of the letter I, you know, deep and narrow. We want fewer people who are shaped like the letter I. We want more people who are shaped like the letter T. It's that simple. T, a renaissance engineer. That's what we want. People who have bona fides, who can do something. They actually understand what's going on. I never said you weren't supposed to be able to do something. But people who are broad enough to understand, value migrates, they need to migrate. Things need to change. Remember that first, one of the first charts I showed you, the Kurzweil chart? What, what do you think it would have been like for me if I had stopped learning when I left our PI and went to work for IBM, armed with my circuit skills in vacuum tubes? How do you think that would have worked? That's all I had, my friends. Fundamentally, that's all I had. Everything else, I had to learn along the way. I, I had to make myself into a Renaissance person. I had to make myself into a T-shaped person. I, w I don't know many of you, but I'd say most of you had to do the same thing. You had to shape yourself into a T-shaped person, or else you wouldn't be here. That's, that's you now. That wasn't you coming out of school. We want this now. We need this now. We need people who are prepared for the world that is fundamentally going to be driven by a services-driven economy, loaded with all kinds of opportunity. Loaded with all kinds of opportunity to get rich, to make money, to get well, to fix things that are broken, to, to fix the environment, to fix everything around us. To just do well in general. But not if they're not going to be more built like this. We'll need a few who are definitely I-shaped. God bless them. They'll always be welcomed in the world. But the, we're talking about, we're, my friends, we're talking about in this country the next 100 million Americans, not I, T. We're talking about the next 3 billion citizens of the globe, not I, but T. These problems, just a few of them up here, they are as complicated a set of problems as you will see anywhere in the world. You don't do these. You don't do these things by yourself, in abstraction, in isolation, as an I. You do these things collaboratively, whether it's Stockholm, Sweden, and the wonderful intelligent transportation system they built to avoid building bridges, to reduce congestion, to reduce you know, the assault on the environment. God bless the city you know, managers that came up with this approach. Look what they did. They automated the whole traffic flow into the center of Stockholm in the morning from whatever it is, 8 to 10, 
20% less traffic, 40% lower emissions, and drove more than 40,000 people to use mass transport and didn't build two bridges. Brilliant. All done, not, not by themselves in isolation, not with one company. I think it's 36 companies had to coordinate to do this. A very T-shaped project. It starts with a city manager, a mayor, the city council saying, we're going to do something about this. We're going to fix this problem. And we're going to not fix it in the 20th century way. We're going to fix it in the 21st century way. And they did. Now they're the brilliant example. Everybody wants to build a system like, like they have in Stockholm, Sweden. Powerful, powerful enterprise computing. You know, where does that, do you have a book on that? I mean, you know, did they teach you that somewhere? You know, is that, is that anything anybody would normally want to do? Or this? I said oceans, waters and oceans. The Beacon Institute, you know, it was part of it. It's part of that study. I mean, this, this, this is a big freaking deal. You know, long before you die from a hole in the ozone layer, you die from a lack of water. I have news for you. Don't tell Al Gore that, uh, by the way. <laughs> Let somebody else get this Nobel Prize. Um, and there's a lot of people right here in the Mid-Hudson Valley who understand this incredibly well. So this is a very complex problem. You know, sensors in the Hudson River, you know, from Tidewater all the way down to New York City. I don't know, thousands of sensors, real-time sensors, spitting out data on, a, on, a, on an instance basis, trying to be assimilated and trying not just to be stored, but to actually be processed. We saw you dump that crap in the Hudson River. We saw you do it. You know, and we know that you dumped that PVC over there. We saw you do that too, just today, just five minutes ago. So it's not like two years from now we come back and say, can we see your records and you know, we'll, you know, we'll uh, subpoena you and we'll do all of the rest of that stuff. We see it now. What a difference that makes. You don't think that's an enterprise computing problem? You don't think there's something serious? Now look at that. I mean, you talk about the Medici effect. I mean, you know, clean water, computers, how's that work? How's that work? What do you do? Well, what do you do in general about the fact that the digital data of the world doubles every five years? What do you do about that? How do you keep up with that? <laughs> Remember that technology curve I showed you? I told you it was going to go on. Small things are going to continue to get smaller. Big things are going to continue to get bigger. I mean, I lived when I started 45 years ago. I started out in what's referred to as the kilo world and the milli world. Milli seconds, kilo bits. 10 to the 3, 10 to the minus 3. I left IBM in October. We were into the 10 to the 15th world. We were into the peta world and we were into the femto world. 10 to the 15th, 10 to the minus 15th. We will all experience, five years from now, 10 at the most, what's called the Yocto and the Yato world. 10 to the 24th, 10 to the minus 24th. That's where it's going. Can you believe that? 10 to the minus, something that small? Something that big? 10 to the 24th? What, what if it's, that's your data? 10 to the 24th, you have a yada bytes worth of data. Go figure what you're going to do with that. IBM will help you, by the way. Um, <laughs> I, I put this up here just to remind me to tell you how uncertain everything is and how everything's going to continue to change. Uh, I just did a presentation last week uh, to the National Academy of Engineering on lifelong learning. The average Half-life of a degree, of a, of, a, of a degree, a college degree. Got any ideas? Four years. Four years. Now, some of them go 10, but all of the engineering disciplines range from four to 10 now. In some cases, in some cases, students are leaving college with two years' worth of education that's already been outdated and obsolete. Don't ever presume that anything stays the same. I mean, we're going to make a lot of in interesting decisions here in the energy and utility world, a lot of very important decisions, but I'm telling you, most of those decisions that are ahead of us, we're going to have to be making with the least amount of data. And it's going to have the greatest impact on the common good, the common good 
as well as whatever good it might give you, your company, your government, your educational institution or organization. One of the things IBM did recently about all of these things, there are many projects, by the way, that it, you know, it wasn't just what I had on that one slide. It's cities, grid, healthcare, skills and education, which we just ta I talked a lot about, and then the whole management of green. We did a jam. Social networking, remember I told you about social networking? You know, it's not Twitter, it's not my face. It, I mean, yes, it's important given what's happening in Iran right now. Of course, it's wonderful to see all of the, the, the data that we can see uh, in a lockdown country, but the, the thought process about bringing people together, that's where the value is. It's what do you do with that value of social networking? So IBM got 2,000 universities, uh, 2,000 people, 200 universities around the world from 40 countries together. The report will be out uh, at the end of this month, but the reason I'm bringing it up is I want you as enterprise people to always remember the answer to your problem is within your own organization. The, the, the challenge you have is figuring out where it is and how you get to it and how you connect to it. Don't ever underestimate your people. Don't ever underestimate the people working with you or for you. Um, they have the answer. They just don't know that you care. They don't know that, that, that you have the question or they don't know what your question is. We learned that over and over again through this innovation work that we did. And jams is just one way of being able to, the group think is so much better. It's the diversity of thought. It's that who is the person who has the last good thought there? How do we know we should cut you out? How do we know we don't need you? How do we know you don't have anything good to say? We don't. So the more inclusive you are, and that's what this does, it's a very liberating process. We've used GMs over and over again. I drove most of the innovation agenda in IBM. We actually drove IBM going to innovation as a core value through a GM process. It's very powerful.